Hi everyone, it's Philip from FTP Shooting Sports and I'm here today with a review of the new GEMPRO 2-300 uh, in comparison to the old GEMPRO 250. So we have the old GEMPRO 250 on the left here, it is the smaller of the two scales and the new GEMPRO uh, 2300 is on the right. Um, major difference between the scale obviously is the size, the new GEMPRO 2300 is larger and uh, one of the main advantages of it is it has a much larger display. So you can see the display here way easier to read, you can actually see it on the camera versus the old Jumpro uh, 250 has a much smaller display, uh, much more difficult to read. Also the display is angled towards the user so you can see it without having to get your head over the scale where the older one um, you had to you know get closer to it. That might be something that's important to people especially as they're getting older, uh, eyesight is fading uh, or if you just want ease of use it's just much easier to see the display. Um, you could also see that the GEMPRO 300, as I'm going to refer to it, um, this display is lit up all the time. Where on the 250, the display only lights up when you put a weight on it. So if you put a weight on it, um, the display will light up so that you can see it a little easier. 250 has an orange display. The 300 has a blue display with white characters. I think the 300 is easier to read. That's my impression. I would go with this one just based on that fact alone. Uh, both scales have the uh, the lids to help eliminate any of the variance you're going to see in readings from wind currents. Just moving your hand across the scales, you can see just the wind is going to change it. So if you have the air conditioner on or a fan going or anything like that in the room, it's going to affect the accuracy of these scales. So for the best readings, you need to shut the lid. You also want to have your scale on a surface that's not going to be prone to vibrations. Um, if it is, uh, you can you know, use a mouse pad or any kind of a, a rubber foam that's going to absorb some of the vibration. Uh, the GEMPO 300 does come with this in its case and this actually can be used as a vibration pad. The 250 does not come with anything so you would need to buy one on your own. Uh, both of them come with hard cases, um, you know, just your typical hard case, nothing too fancy. Holds the scale, keeps it safe during transport and for storage. And they come with calibration weights. Um, you can see here, a couple of calibration weights. Uh, the 250 comes with a 20 gram weight and the 300 comes with a 50 gram weight. Uh, the main reason of that is the 50 gram weight uh, corresponds with the larger weight capacity of the GEMPRO 2300. That one actually goes to 60 grams. So it will uh, allow you to weigh heavier objects in that old GEMPRO 250 while still maintaining the same resolution. That's a huge bonus because normally to get a scale that holds more weight that maintains the resolution costs a lot more money. But in this case GEMPRO is able to sell you the new scale for less money, same amount of accuracy, better ergonomics, and the weight capacity has gone up while maintaining the same resolution. So that's a real win in my book. Uh, between the two scales they also have adjustable feet they have leveling bubbles on the GEMPRO 300, it's at the front, and at the 250 it's at the back, and then you turn the feet to level it on the surface that you're using. The GEMPRO 300 has an auto-off feature, I disabled that, I hate it, I hate the scale turns off every three minutes. You can go into the menu, per the instructions, and turn that off. Um, other than that, they have very similar features, same resolution, and they all do the same units. So you can do carrots, grains, grams, uh, a couple other things. They're jeweler scales, so uh, they do have a wide range of units they can do, and uh, obviously have to maintain a very good level of accuracy. Uh, both scales come with a loading platform, and they also come with little powder cups here. Um, the scales also both come with uh, you know a set of plastic tweezers and uh, you know instructions and all of that stuff. Um, they both have the great GEMPRO warranty. I believe it's a 20 year warranty on these or 30 years. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll try and update that um, in the, uh, the text for the videos. And uh, you know they've they're got a great build quality. So with that being said let's go and take a look at the scales and uh, compare the two. The big thing that I've heard on the internet that I think is one of the biggest fallacies going about round about the GEMPRO 300 is that it does not resolve the weight as quickly as the GEMPRO 250. On the GEMPRO 300 there's this little uh, circle with, an, with a dot and it looks like an eye. When you put an object on it uh, that will go away and you need to wait for it to come back on to show you that it's locked in the reading. Okay? On the old GEMPRO 250, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's a little unit symbol. So in this case we're in grams, so we got a G. And when you put an object on it, that will start blinking, and then once it stops blinking, that tells you that it's locked on. So here's what I want to show you right now. I want to eliminate that uh, little myth that everybody is seeing on the internet. 
uh, will zero out this scale and you're going to watch for how quickly this locks. Wait on and we are locked. Okay, On the Gempro 250, wait on, we are locked. You can see that took a lot longer. Let's try it again. Let's go back to the Gempro 300, wait on, locked. Gempro 250, wait on, and locked. So I think the big thing people are not really noticing about the Gempro 250 is that just because the display stops moving uh, doesn't tell you that the scale is actually locked on its reading. That takes a while longer and that is what the way the scale is designed to work. So as far as the scale itself telling you it's locked, the Gempro 300 is far faster. So I'm not sure where that came from if somebody had a defective scale or not, but that is just not the case in what I am seeing. All right, let's do a comparison between the two scales wearing something uh, pretty light. I put these scales both into grains, which is what us reloaders work in, and I'm going to weigh a single stainless steel uh, media um, piece. So we will uh, try and get it in the same spot each time. We'll put that on the scale. We'll shut the lid here, and we'll wait for that to stabilize. Okay, so it's locked in, 0 0.90 grains. And we will take that off now, and we will put it in the 250, try and put it right in the middle there, shut the lid, and we have got 0 .90 grains there as well. Okay, so uh, weighing identically as far as that goes with the lid closed, we'll go back to the 300 here. And oh, I can pick this up. So we'll shut the lid here. We'll zero it. We'll wait for the scale to settle down here as we're going for maximum accuracy. We'll open our lid. We'll put our pin back on there gently. Shut the lid. And we will wait. Okay. And we're at 0.92, so that's within the uh, two hundredths variation that the scale does have as far as its accuracy goes. So you're going to see that very commonly on a scale. And we'll go back to the GemPro 250 here. And we will put it back on there. And we will shut the lid. And we will wait. And that one is coming back as point. Oh, it's actually 0.85 that time. So that one has moved. Um, one of the things you want to do with a, a load-bearing scale like these that use the load cells is, you know, occasionally re-weigh things for the maximum accuracy because how you put it on there, where you sit it on the scale can affect the accuracy. So you want to weigh things a couple of times if, if it's something that's really important to you to get the accuracy bang on. Um, we'll do this one more time. We'll shut the lid. Okay, and we're back at 0.85. Okay, on our GEMPRO 300 here, we'll zero this. And we'll put this back on, and we'll shut the lid. And we're at 0 0.90. So you can see the scales are pretty much working within the manufacturer's advertised accuracy, which is great. And between the two of them, the difference is very negligible. Um, if you are doing any kind of ultra-precision reloading, like 1,000-yard accuracy, you're probably going to need to go to a clinical scale to really be good at that. Um, otherwise, uh, you're really not going to be as precise as you need to be for that application. But for 99.9% .9 of us, these scales are more accurate than your traditional beam scales, and pretty much most scales on the a market which are only accurate to plus or minus usually a tenth of a grain, sometimes they're two tenths of a grain, depending on the scale. So when you're using this type of scale, you've got to make sure you keep it away from all forms of electrical interference. So you don't want to have fluorescent lights near it, you don't want to have a microwave, a TV, a radio, your cell phone, anything like that that can all cause erroneous readings. So if you're finding your scale is drifting a lot or it's not consistent, generally that's the reason. You also want to plug the scale in whenever you can and let it warm up. So let it warm up for 10 or 15 minutes. It's going to give much more accurate readings than if you just try to use it cold. 
Um, also, although both these scales accept batteries, I would not recommend using them as batteries typically only yield the most accurate results when the batteries are fairly new. As they start to die, um, the scales become less responsive. So whenever you can, uh, use a plug. Um, if you have to use batteries, just keep that in mind. Um, with the scales too, I find that the more you use them, um, the more stable they become. So obviously there's a little bit of a breaking in period with these scales. My Gem Pro 250 I've used for years now and uh, it's, it's been very good repeatability wise. 300 here, uh, I literally just put this in for the demonstration today. So we'll weigh a couple other things here. We have a 9mm case. Put it on the 300. Back away. 57.36. And if we go on the 250... Uh, we've got 57 point, and it's still waiting, locked in 57.35. So, you know, almost identical, you know, within the accuracy that the scale is designed to work with. It's, it's pretty much bang on. All right, so one more item here away. Here's a primer, single primer. Put it on the Gem Pro 300, 3.30 grains. And I will take that off, put it on the 250. Wait for it to go, 3.30 grains. So again, um, scales seem to have accuracy almost identical between the two of them. Um, I think the ergonomics on the 300 are a little better. Um, it's a little faster to lock in its readings um, than the, uh, the 250. And uh, you're going to see the little bit of variance you know, in the hundredths of a grain, which is, is what the scale's accuracy is designed to work in. So... Um, as far as reloading goes, for 99.9% .9 of the people out there, uh, these scales are going to do more than what you will ever need as far as accuracy goes, and the warranty just can't be beat with them. So I think if it were me, for my money, I would go with the Gempro 300. You get a higher load capacity, you get a lower price, you get a way bigger display. Ergonomically, it's a better scale. It comes with the vibration mat um, right from the manufacturer. And my personal feeling is that eventually they're going to phase out the 250 because the 300 has the same specifications for accuracy, more ergonomically friendly, and at a lower price point because they've switched the factory for it. So don't think the 250 is going to be around that much longer, but uh, I can't speak for the manufacturer. So I hope you enjoyed that review um, between the two scales. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, sales at fasttoys.net, or you can reply to the comments at the bottom of the YouTube video. And if you'd like to order one, you can come to FTP Shooting Sports at www.fasttoys.ca and you can order them. We've got them in stock and we can ship them out uh, lickety-split for you. Thanks very much.